Good evening. Today the topic for discussion is regarding an important drug which is recently approved two years back, Fendrinone. The drug for CKD progression in diabetic patients. All the details required for the exam as well as your clinical practice we are going to see here today. First, what is this Fendrinone? Fendrinone is a mineralocorticoid receptor blocker. What is it? It is a newer drug. Recently approved by the FDA for the treatment of chronic kidney disease in patients of diabetic patients who are having proteinuria to reduce the progression based on the various trials that is evidence based uh, approach. They have found this drug have reduced the progression of the kidney disease in diabetic patient who are having the proteinuria and also it is found to have reduced the cardiac mortality and morbidity. Newer drug, non-steroidal drug and the extra information blocking the mineralocorticoid receptor. That's all. a non-steroidal mineralocorticoid receptor blocker as I told it is being recently approved in 2022 by the FDA for the treatment of progression of the CKD. What is the mechanism? The mechanism is renin angiotensin aldosterone system blocker. Previously the groups available are renin inhibitor, AC inhibitor, ARBs, aldosterone blocker which is previously or traditionally that you might be knowing is spironolactone and the eplerinone. In that group, this drug comes. So blocking this, blocking the system. So fenrinone is blocking the mineralocorticoid receptors which are present in the organs. Thereby reducing the inflammation and fibrosis because aldosterone is an important hormone which maintains the homeostasis and also it is important in the inflammation and fibrosis once the CKD sets in. So the mechanism is blocking the mineralocorticoid receptor specifically and thereby reducing the inflammation and fibrosis in the kidney and also blocking the mineralocorticoid receptor in other parts of the body apart from the kidney. It is having other cardiac benefits. So it comes under the ROS group inhibitors. So what is the advantage? Already there are ROS inhibitor available including the aldosterone blocker which is pyranolactone and the eplerinone. What is the advantage? The advantage of finrinone is more specific, less side effects compared to spironolactone and eplerinone the gynecomastia sexual related side effects that uh, these uh, aldosterone blockers the previous group of drugs had and it is a non steroidal drug this group they have found might be having extra advantage in reducing the progression of the ckd so that is the advantage even though previously renin inhibitor, AC inhibitor, ARB are there. They have did trials regarding this drug also. So this added to the armamentorium in the treatment of chronic kidney disease progression. So for the better understanding I have kept this table. Here India's Finrinone. You can see the comparison. It is a non-steroidal drug. Whereas this pyranolactone and this Eplerinone or steroidal drug. So it associated with the steroidal complication. So look at the potency. Potency is high compared to these two, even though spironolactone is also high. Selectivity is less in spironolactone, whereas it is very selective also. What is selectivity? In the particular target receptor it block rather than the generalized one. And sexual side effect like gynecomastia is more in the uh, spironolactone and the aldactone group half-life is short, short this half-life is long 
indication i already told you so this slide is for the comparison between these two or we can say advantage of this drug so what is the drug it is available in two formulation one is 10 mg and 20 mg common clinical practice we start with 10 mg once daily if the egfr is more than 60 20 mg can be tried but the question comes since we are going to start for ckd stage 3 a 3 b and below so most of the time almost all the time we always start with 10 mg only 10 mg is the dose what are the side effects since it is a ras blocker all the ras ras in the sense renin angiotensin aldosterone system blocker all the ras blocker associated with the risk of hyperkalemia so that is why this drug to be started only if the potassium is less than 5.5 few clinicians prefer this drug uh, potassium to be less than 5 to start the pinrenone since it is a ras blocker renin angiotensin aldosterone system blocker it causes hypotension mild reduction in bp up to 10 millimeter of mercury the bp might fall and if the patient is already on any other ras inhibitor it should not be added along with that because it increases the risk of hyperkalemia so that is an one important clinical point for the physician who are seeing this or the md residents who are seeing this don't add this drug if a patient is already on a ras inhibitor dual ras inhibitor many other parameters have to be considered so currently don't add because it increases the risk of hyperkalemia in a patient who have in a patient who are having cardiac dysfunction if the creatinine is very well under a uh, good condition where patient can tolerate if you think risk is high yes that time you can consider but preferably not to add dual drugs at the beginning start with one see the response add the another so what is the egfr cutoff in the previous trial they didn't give this drug when the egfr is less than 25 because as the egfr goes below the risk of hyperkalemia increases probably progression also increases and once this finrenone is started in the patient i preferably do the repeat creatinine level within one week and look for 30 percent fall or 30 percent rise in creatinine or 30 percent fall in uh, fall you can remove this 30 percent rise in creatinine if it is there preferably you can avoid or stop in renewal as per the standard guidelines the potassium can be repeated or the creatinine and potassium to be repeated after four weeks but clinical practice within one week also this kind of rise might be there so that is why within one week we used to check if there is a 30 percent rise in creatinine not the egfr fall it is 30 percent rise in the creatinine this drug to be stopped this is one info related to egfr if the egfr is less than 25 preferably avoid it because there won't be much benefit because already enough amount of fibrosis might have set in as i told after starting this drug when you know a 10 milligram once daily probably after four weeks we have to check the potassium level and the repeat kft to look for these kind of 30 percent rises there or not and the uh, the trial names if you are going to give an exam probably you have to write regarding the trials also the trials which are done uh, for this drug is figaro in the fidelio the description uh, there is a video i made regarding these two trials in the description in the description i will give you the link you can uh, go through it if you want to know the details of these trials excretion mostly through the kidney only around 80 percent 90 percent gets excreted in the kidney half life is up to two to three hours and in the liver also metabolism occurs so the cytochrome these are the added information and the fda drug approved it in 2022 so in summary indinone is a non-steroidal mineral receptor blocker 
comes in the category of ROS inhibitors. The dose is 10 mg once daily, preferably if EGFR is more than 25. In patients with diabetes with the CKD and proteinuria, the drug is indicated. One thing you have to look for is potassium should be less than 5.5. And 30% rise in creatinine if it is there after stopping after starting the drug. Stop, stop this drug. So you have to stop it. And the gynecomastia and the steroidal side effect which occurs with spinal lactone is not here. And it is very specific and potent. So this is all regarding this drug. Pendrinone. Bye bye.